It's almost what I came out. That calls me on Sunday. Oh, please put it over. Oh. I make a motion we're seeing an open session. Mr. Mm -hmm. President, I make a motion we reopen it. And... Motion on the floor. Open, uh, I, I make a motion that we open an open session. Reconvene. Reconvene an open session. But where is the, how are you going to see a green? Anywhere. Well, I mean, to wait until uh, they say it's on. Yeah, so that we don't go crazy. Yeah, so we don't get sued. You are all set to go. Mr. President, I make a motion we reopen. Yeah. Now you could do it. But one more time. We reopen in, in the town council opens in uh, open session. A second. All in favor? First aye. Davis aye. Moffat aye. Say by the town council right. president that no votes were taken during executive session. Consider and vote to motion to seal the minutes of executive session. I make a motion that we seal the minutes of the executive session. Second. Motion of the floor, second. All in favor? First aye. Davis First aye. aye. Very aye. Excellent. You didn't vote. Aye. You didn't I, vote. I, 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 you said Thank I. you. Okay. <laughs> did, did I vote? Yeah, you're first. Right. Good evening and welcome to the Hopkins Town Council meeting, May 1st, 2023. Call to order, a moment of silence flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic of which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'll say it next, Scott. Roll call. Council Hershey here. Present. Council Moffat. Here. Council Davis. Here. Council Burns. Here. Council Gary's here. Excellent. First up, public comment. Anybody online? No, no one online. All right, moving forward. Keep approval of the consent. Huh? Approval of the consent Keep order. Public forum. Yes. Oh. It's fine. Yeah, if he's here. Yeah, let's go ahead. Just want to have it at the end. Want to speak, sir? Sure. Um, hey, everyone. My name is Matthew Sabakis. I, I represent the Hoyles. Um, I think I've reached, I try to reach out to both of you individually. I'm just here to make a suggestion. That's all. So, um, I know you've got a lot of thoughtful, creative um, plans that are in the works for your town. Um, in terms of like a development, potential development proposal, um, 80 Palmer Circle is uh, potentially could be a private public partnership with the town uh, under your leadership and the town council's leadership. Uh, we do have the private funding to in, in approximately around three, three and a half to five million dollars in terms of helping the Hoyles. Uh, become whole. So here's a suggestion, less than 30 seconds, a private public partnership that centralizes all your, your, your governance in terms of your public works, your locations, you guys determine this. Um, it's a lease to own. Um, you own the building outright, say after 20 years, you amortize it around um, 20 years, I'd say 15 to 17,000 a month, somewhere in between there, you own it outright. You keep your CapEx in your pocket. This $4.7 million that I kind of tabulated, which I'm not sure if it's true or not, plus other historic buildings, et cetera. You keep that money. Um, you redeploy it into those existing buildings and you have 80 Palmer Circles, potentially at kind of a headquarters. Um, we'll build the senior center um, so you can save that money. And if we um, go through the right procedure and the right protocol for potentially 55 plus apartments that actually program and feed the senior center. It kind of makes sense. We can make a campus that is um, in alignment with your comprehensive plan. The senior center apartments that don't tax the school system for 55 plus uh, for three, three and a half million dollars. You can, you know, kind of see your dreams come true. Um, and that's kind of the, the open forum context. I know there's a lot of details. Um, I'll put together a pro forma. That's uh, that Michael Lashinsky will put together. He's one of the Rhode Island's best private public partner um, in terms of um, 
municipal bonds, and he's, he's, a, he's a class A operation over on Reservoir Avenue. So that's it. So I represent the Hoyles. My name is Matthew Smekis. I'm going to put something together that makes sense for everyone. And that's it. So we'll probably show up um, maybe tomorrow or the next day if, you know, if, if it's warranted. But that's it. I'll stick around. I've got some cards. And just, uh, I guess, proceed with whatever you're going to do. And I'll answer any questions if you want, uh, whether here or privately. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. I'll just say, I mean, this is public forum, so we, we won't be discussing this. Sure. So, Joe? That's Joe Moreau, Old Depot Road. Uh, as most of you know, I've been involved with this uh, B2B before they started and during the construction. I was also invited there. I used to walk that area when they had the uh, the open house. And I was able to see the facilities that they have there, the grounds that they have. You know, that building probably now is, is five or six years old. I'm, I'm not sure, but I just would hope, and, and I'm sure we would do this, that we'd have an open mind and at least listen and look into it. Because in my opinion, I think this is a can of worms. We get into this, this part of the building when we start doing work in here uh, with the water issues that we have here. Uh, I just think that we should really take a hard look at that, that B2B building. It's in the middle of the town. I don't know if everyone's familiar with it, if you've ever been up there. You walk in that lower level. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of cubicles that have to be taken care of. Um, but you look in there, there's a cafeteria, there's a gymnasium, the perfect setup. You go around the back of the building, which is ground level, is the second story. Uh, you know, all ADA compliant, uh, AC generator. I mean, it really is top of the notch. And I was here initially during the planning board phases where they tried to keep it to blend into the town. It's not a typical three-story office building with a brick facade. You know, it really does does blend in. But I would just hope that we'd give it some give it some thought. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Just for a comment. <clears throat> yeah, I'd like to yep, go ahead. ask one question. At a 55 plus senior apartment, are they like three, three bedroom apartments? Are they or are they condominiums? Are they renting or would they be owned? That's for you to determine. So we could you, line... could you, sir? Could you come up and talk okay. on the mic, please? I think I get you right. It's it's really for you to determine. Um, it based in alignment with your comprehensive plan. So if you felt like it was there was a total need for something else residential, you would let us know, we'd make an adjustment. Okay, but you, you called them apartments, so it would be a rental situation? I don't know yet. Um, whatever is important to the town, that's what we would do. So if you said rentals are important, we would make it rentals. If you said it was apartments to own, we would make it apartments to own. But as long as we don't tax your school system. Does that, does yeah. that answer? Okay, thank yep. you. I have my, my business cards are here. Okay. I want one. Okay, thank Excellent. you. Excellent. Approval of the consent order. Everybody go with the consent order? That's fine. Okay. Consent agenda. Approve town council minutes meetings of April 17th, 2023. Approve town council meeting executive session minutes of April 17th, 2023. Set Monday, May 8th, 2023 as a date for special town council meeting to adopt and the proposed 2024 fiscal year budget approved approved the solid waste and recycling service agreement between Rhode Island Resources Corporation and municipality. I have one correction on page eight of the uh, meeting minutes of April 17th. Other than that, so can we just go to that and make that correction and we can do it all in yep. one? Yep. Okay. On page eight, one, two, three, four. Five from the bottom, the word lower, it's low space or, O-R. I think that's what it was supposed to be. Low or moderate income. Okay. Oh, the only thing I like to say is I have, I have I'm on the board of the Masonic Temple. It should be low or. Seven o'clock on the second low. Monday. Lower. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, what did you could, say? Could we adjust the time for Monday night to like six or do you really think we should do it at seven? 
I think it's the budget. Last You're talking the special one, right? On the next yeah. Monday. Usually yeah. it's pretty brief. Yeah. What day is it? May it's 8th. Monday the 8th. Next Monday. Is that how you want someone no, you're going to do? I mean, I... We would norm not normally meet that day. Can you yeah. figure it out? Oh, yeah. Fine. Just stay in time. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. What yeah. time do you want to do that? Scott, Earlier what time do you want to do that? Uh, it, well, I think Mason sometimes meet at seven thirty to seven, but so I was thinking five. maybe six thirty. That work? Is that too early? Monday. I mean Monday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That work for you? <laughs> why don't we just do it? Why don't we just do it at seven? And I just, I just, if I have to go Is late, seven gets you. Why don't we just do it at seven and get it? I mean, changing it earlier is fine too. If it works for you, if it that, works. that's fine. No, that's okay. We do it at seven. So uh, seven going once, seven going twice. I, I make a motion that the consent agenda be adopted in the the, the special meeting for the town council to adopt the proposed twenty three twenty four budget be held at seven o'clock p.m. Which I make that a motion. That's right. Okay, excellent. Motion's on the floor. A second. All in favor? First aye. Davis aye. Yeah, because Burns aye. Right. So Nothing earth shattering. Right. Excellent. All right, moving along. Vacancies and appointments. Discuss and consider and possibly vote to appoint Susan Rosen to the Conservation Committee. Mr. President, I uh, move that we appoint uh, Susan Rosen to the Conservation Commission. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? First aye. Davis aye. Burns aye. Moffat aye. Gary aye. I wish her. I wish her the best. Excellent. Move forward. Discuss and consider possibly vote a vote to appoint Ed Sepov to the Economic Development Commission. Mr. President, motion. Go ahead. To appoint Edda Zaslav to the Economic Development Commission. Second. Motion on four, second. Thank you. No, second. Motion on four and second. Yep. So I said. Okay. Oh. All in favor? First aye. Davis aye. Moffat aye. Here you are. Wish you the best. Thank you for Thank stepping you. up. Thank you very much. Uh, move forward. Town manager. Town hall consolidation update. Good evening, Council. So I've asked uh, Greg Smoley from our architect firm um, and engineering firm, DRA, to come here and kind of give you guys a high-level update, um, show you the layout of the proposed uh, consolidation. As you guys know, this project's been going on for quite some time, and uh, there's been a lot of legwork done prior to this. So he's going to bring you guys up to speed on what was done maybe in the prior Council and in, in the last uh, year since you've been in Council. Um, so, Greg, if you want to, we've got a little slideshow too that I'm Evening. I'm uh, Greg Smalley from DRA Architects. And as soon as we get a slideshow, I can walk you through that. But this is one of those projects, as you may or may not know, has been around since about 2015, is our project number on it. So, it goes not back quite a ways. Did anybody ever tell you you look like John Chaver? Yeah, it comes up occasionally. <laughs> all right, I just want to make sure I don't remember yeah. me. Go ahead, sir. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's quite all right. I'm playing for time anyway because your uh, computer system isn't cooperating. Yeah, for you. Yeah. Okay. It's busy. Some people think I look like Robert Redford, but I think I'm a better looking guy. I'm just, I'm being facetious. Yeah. You don't have, you didn't even have to say that. <laughs> I couldn't resist, you know, I like to go. <laughs> you hang out behind CBS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh my gosh. At least I bring a little levity to the council table. 
Well, you sure do, boy. And then mm. so. <laughs> okay, it looks like oh, okay. we're up and running here. So awesome. maybe a, a quick overview is just a couple of slides in this. The um, next one's the uh, overview of the where we stand right now. And um, as you know, by the way, everyone's parked outside. It's pretty much a um, non-structured approach to the world here. And typical of most of these buildings, handicap accessibility is, um, is a bit challenged. And as that has evolved and the building has evolved, they've kind of passed one another in terms of how this building functions relative to uh, what you need for a town hall. So back in 2015 or so, the, um, the, the decision was to uh, expand this as much as possible. And as you are probably aware, behind us is uh, wet. We're also on a well. And we have septic systems, so we have some challenges. And if you um, jump over the next slide, shows where we're at now. So pink is the existing building. Um, the gray towards the bottom is the roadway. Orange is the new area. And then parking to the south and to the north, so the right and the left as you look at it. And what it does is structure enough parking to address the um, the zoning regulations and requirements for parking as well as get enough parking for the um, function of town hall, but also to formalize some of the parking a little bit to make it uh, a little bit easier to maintain and take care of and takes the parking and comes out behind the building on the south side and pulls that back a little bit. And what that does is to uh, let us get stormwater and wetlands addressed, get the septic system upsized a bit and um, get a well put in this. And so we are be able to get off of the well that is shared with the other buildings and have it run this building on its own. Um, this has been up to uh, Rhode Island DEM. We got comments back um, late summer. And as of today, we have just about all those comments addressed and ready to submit that back up to the state so they can continue their review. Um, what's important on this is that uh, your handicapped access to the front of the building right now is not really in keeping with um, the Americans with Disabilities Act. And so part of what we're doing here is getting handicapped accessibility that's compliant and bringing it in through the new part of the building, which is where the majority of the town function would take place. So on the um, floor plan on the next slide, you see a enlargement <coughs> of the um, office space. It brings the town manager over to here and gets everybody into the um, town hall proper. It keeps this conference room uh, working essentially as it is right now, except with a ramp up to the upper platform. So that would be handicapped and ADA compliant. And it puts um, public restrooms that are more appropriately sized, puts ADA compliant bathrooms in the building, and then puts a um, reasonable office space for all the town functions along that bar across the back. So. It is um, obscured from the historic side of the building, given the size of this. The uh, roof of the new building would be a little bit taller than the roof of this building, um, simply because of the size of the new building and the, the pitch on it. It also gives us the possibility to put a photovoltaic array on the side that's away from the historic district. On the, on the ADD, <clears throat> on the disability side, are we gonna have, we're just gonna have push button on the, the places that are required. I mean, of course, not yep. every office, but. Yeah, they're actually not necessarily required by code as long as your uh, door pull and operation comports with the uh, requirements. But push buttons are something that most people like on the public buildings. So we um, we haven't quite defined hardware throughout the building yet. So we'll take that take that under uh, under advisement to us. Uh, where is the, the handicap ramp up, ramp up to it? Yeah, but there's nothing on there. Yeah, but I mean, here. Yeah, kind of tell me where it is on the, on that picture. The the old one or the new the one? old the, the new one. The, the, Where's the new one? New buildings this upper is, upper right. The new buildings to the top, and the ramps are to the right and left. Yeah. You see where it okay. says new entrance and ramp, and on the opposite side it says new entrance and ramp. That's in black. Okay, yeah. thank you. Mm -hmm. And then at the bottom, where the existing stairs and ramp are now, that would be extended out and okay. covered Thank you. so that would become what's known as an area of refuge if someone had to evacuate the building but couldn't get down the stairs they would wait there for um, a uh, rescue 
So it maintains the two vaults, which are the most expensive pieces to build for a town hall and do the least for you when they're all said and done. And it takes over um, all but the boiler for the existing building that will continue to work and run. The rest of the building will be on new systems for heating and air conditioning. Uh, it would revamp or come in with all new lighting and all those pieces of uh, energy efficiency that the code in towns are looking for now. So it would um, build upon the look of this building. It would maintain the historic feel of the, uh, of the building overall and maintain the historic character of the front of the building. Uh, probably make it take a step back towards more historic feeling by getting rid of the ramp out front and going back to a stair. Not to, <clears throat> not to get the town manager's blood pressure up, but any kind of backup generator in case there's power? Or anything yes, there is. <laughs> yeah, we are looking at a generator that would run the um, <clears throat> the well, <clears throat> the well, and all the heating and cooling systems, and um, essentially run the building. It wouldn't quite work as a shelter, but it's not a building for a shelter. But you wouldn't have to worry about losing the building for an extended um, cold snap. Right? Could you explain um, just briefly the discussions we had with Public Works recently um, on the HVAC systems? We we took a, a second look at the, the heating and cooling mm -hmm. and there was potentially some significant savings there. And it also eliminates the concern of having one large unit that would go, if it were to go, the whole building could be out of AC or heat. Um, whereas like these individual units would mm -hmm. provide um, us to alleviate that concern. We'd have multiple units so that if one went, it wouldn't be a problem for the remainder so like, of the building. It's so like a mini setup. Mm -hmm. but yeah, right up there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He did pretty good with that, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. Right. He's, he's getting better. finance guy. <laughs> <laughs> we, get him, we get him up to the town garage change. Oh, well, change. <laughs> but one of the advantages you have in a building, a, a project that's seven years old, is everything's advanced since then. So we went back and are revisiting all the mechanical and electrical side as we are now. What would the exterior look like? Right now we're talking about uh, mirroring this with a, um, a shiplap, but it would probably be a, um, a cementitious board. So we wouldn't have to worry about rotting. You wouldn't have to back paint it. And your, uh, maintenance is much, much lower. And you might very well see the whole building framed in uh, light gauge metal uh, framing. And it would be slab on grade, so you wouldn't have the... Um... So kind of like clapboard, right? Yep. Kind of like the old style on the building. Like Correct. Right? Also, um, I, at first sight, I didn't really pick up on this until after we met for the first time, uh, going back, I don't know, about a year ago. Um, but the council chambers, if you notice, there's actually some rehab that's or renovations that are being done here as well. So the IT room is going to be removed and there's going to be a ramp up to the stage. And then this office is going to be removed. So there'll be the stage will be much bigger. And then those two cubicles will be taken out. So there'll be more room in the council chambers as well. We might have to reconfigure these TVs, um, which shouldn't be a, a big deal because we have the wires mm -hmm. run. Wow. That's good. But, yeah, I just have a question. Have, have you looked at the property as far as the water level? Because I think one of the problems with rot in this building is because of the dampness. I think that's been a concern. And the water table, if you looked at anything like that, any concern about that? We have just finished up with um, reflagging the edge of the wetlands, and we have the uh, borings prior for uh, water table. So we know that we're above the water table by, um, by enough. I can say it's close to three feet for a slab on grade, so even the foundations aren't aren't in the water from what, we, um, from what we've seen. The um, uh, stormwater storage, which it would be out back, is um, at least a foot below floor level for uh, when that overtops. So it would have to go a foot over the spillway before it would get to the building. Um, I think the problem you probably have with this building is its, it's age and the way it was built, when it was built. It, it doesn't ventilate well, which is yeah. typical of these older buildings. They just weren't thinking that way when they built them. Um, I don't know what year the, uh, I grew up in town, 
in the town clerking vault, main vault, was built. But I know it was within my lifetime, and I was born in '53. But it must have been in the '60s or maybe even the '70s mm -hmm. when the current vault, the main vault, was built. I can't remember the year, but I knew uh, that wasn't always part of the town hall. Right. If I remember correctly. You, you don't have any information on when that wall was built. I don't think we have a date on that. This should be probably up. So I'm just asking, you know, there should be a print on the side of the door, vendor who made it, year, type, all that. Mm -hmm. it should be sort of. So the last we have is a timeline to give you an idea of where we're, uh, where we're at with this. Oh. That was your cue. Yeah. <laughs> so. Is a a little bit a um, little bit difficult to read unless you're closer to it. And um, in essence, what we have is a couple of things overlapping: the update of the mechanical electrical engineering for it, the site um, engineering, which I got most of that in today from my consultant. Uh, we'd finish that up. We're going to do a review with the town's on call engineer when we're done, and we'll submit that to Rhode Island DEM. Um, they have a specified time period in which they can review it. We're hopeful to move that along and um, by mid-July get things wrapped up and be able to go out to bid. And that would put you into construction by August. And we're expecting somewhere between 12 and 14 months. So if you start August of 2023, you would finish somewhere around September, October of 2024 to, um, to move in. Frank, could you get us copies of this? Yeah, of please. You're talking August 24th. I mean, October 2024. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The end. Yeah. Pretty straightforward building to build. It's not, not that complex. Yeah. Excellent. Bouncers have any questions? Um, square footage and square footage. <clears throat> I do not offhand remember this the total question. square footage. I I can't remember. I I, I, I don't want to guess either. Yeah, no. I'll I'll, just, I'll, I'll take it off. It's, yeah. I'll, Are we I'll, talking about in-state contracts or out-of-state contracts? Well, you, you would go with public bid. Um, so it's it's a public bid. You have um, you don't have a real lot of options. Um, you can pre-qualify, but it's a relatively small building. Market's pretty tight right now. Um, unfortunately, the people that could build this kind of stuff really well typically won't bid into the public market because of the bonding. So we've been talking to a number of firms that this fits very well into their portfolio and just letting them know that it's out there. Um, the, more that, the more that you can talk it up and get it out to people, the, the better your chances will be of getting people to answer the uh, the uh, the bid request market is really tight right now, so it's a uh, it takes a lot of effort at the beginning to get people interested in it. I know there's another company out of Wesley that did the Charleston Town Hall, mm -hmm. and they did a phenomenal job over there. And they were local, in state, yeah. all their money stayed in state. <coughs> yeah. why, did, why did you say they were reluctant because of the bond situation? Right now, with the way the the market is, public bidding takes puts certain demands on your um, your firm for paperwork and bonds and things that the private market doesn't necessarily demand of you. So your in house costs go up to um, to, to bid and build in the people? public market. Excuse me. For the construction people, the yeah. Costs go up. yeah. As far as I know, this isn't your side of the house, but as far as materials and. All that I know we're coming out of code, everything's really starting to come back up strong. But uh, I just don't want to be one of these things where we get halfway through and oh, yeah, it's an eight month stretch till we get X piece of equipment or mm -hmm. something like that. I know that's not you, but well, right now we, we do we do consider all of that as you go forward and going to the um, the smaller um, split systems okay. increase the availability. Um, than going with a, a single or two larger um, HVAC systems. Um, switch gear is relatively lightweight in the building, so it's not the uh, commercial or school level stuff that's got 80 week lead times. Um, this is, if it's 400 amp, it should be relatively accessible, uh, okay. available. 
Um, we've been talking with some of the suppliers um, and they're indicating that for, for one, finally costs are starting to stabilize and drop a little bit um, for this type of construction and availability is, is getting better. So yeah. right now it's mostly switch gear. Yeah, I just want to see if it's a thing where you know, we're missing, <clears throat> everything's just about filled, but we're missing that one last fuzzy hump there. Yeah, I asked that same question. I was concerned about that too. And, and I, think, I think this was smart. So there wasn't like steel beams, but that was like, a, that would be a big concern. Um, there was something else I was Ryan. From a budgeting standpoint, um, we have about $200,000 in contingencies in case we need it built in. Um, and then we have, which is a pretty significant number. Um, and then we also have, uh, hopefully we won't need it. We also have a little bit of savings on potentially on the HVAC. So, um, and we also actually just found another small savings where we were, ex it's, it might be cost neutral, but we've expanded the footprint slightly. Um, if you look, we, we ex expanded this wall out to here. So it increased the break room and mechanic room. And then we also extended this wall out this window here, and it actually was uh, gave us more room in the, the women's room, or we're actually kind of put in an employee's uh, only bathroom, uh, potentially in the break room right there, um, because that was kind of a big request from some of the ladies that come all. So nice we're trying to accommodate yeah. the employees on that end. So it seems something, uh, something we could do, and if anything, it, it might be uh, save us money if not cost us. Okay. And I, I'm not speaking out of right. Well, you, you can't you, you can't, can't say it on the record and then look at me and say I asked the zero. <laughs> All right. Well, don't quote me on that. But that's that's the no, way. He's right. I just have to give him a hard time. The, the only question <laughs> I say it under roll. The only question I have, you know, this uh, project, we are using some ARPA funds, and so what's the end time for us to be able to? Than the ARPA fund. It has to be obligated by 2024. Yeah. Obligated. Yep. But not necessarily yep. spent. Okay. Great. Yep. Okay. Yeah, before they take it back by December 2024. But we're we're hoping for a completion date by, you know, September October mm -hmm. of 2024. So it should be well within the window. Um, you know, if we had any hiccups, I think we're still covered. We have there's all the funds will be obligated by that point. Okay. Right. Well, we're good. Thanks. Does anybody else? Thank you for your time, sir. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thanks, Greg. <clears throat> All right, moving forward, new business. Discuss and very possibly vote to approve a resolution is in support of FY 2024 proposed infrastructure funds sponsored by myself, LA. I'm gonna let town manager talk it. Oh, sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Sidebars are fine. <laughs> okay, where are we at? Oh, the, re the resolution. Okay, so as some of you might be aware, um, I'm sure you probably heard at this point, there's been a couple press releases about the state budget and there's about $20 million in the new state budget, which is pretty unprecedented for the state to put money aside for road maintenance. Uh, it's road and bridge maintenance funding. Um, and the governor has advised that the funds are going to be allocated out to all the municipalities. So 15 of the 20 million will be evenly distributed to all the cities and towns. And 5 million, the remaining 5 million of the funds will be allocated based on the mileage of town roads. So that's another 85,000. Um, so the 15 million divided evenly is about 350,000. Um, and then there'd be another 85 that we would be entitled to. However, these funds don't just, that they're not just giving these funds over, the town, towns are required to match. Um, so if, if some towns don't match it, there could be a bigger pool for, for towns that do match. Uh, so that's worth mentioning. Um, it's a two third match at this point. And uh, Councilor Keery and I were at a, a meeting seminar last weekend where uh, Representative Rogers was kind of explaining the, the logic behind that. And they, they just want to make sure that the towns are invested as well into these projects. So 
there's at this point they're calling for a two third match on the funds, um, which I think um, works out perfectly for the town of Hopkinton because we actually had a debt service. If you recall from the budget sessions, we had a debt service come off or expire this year. So in the upcoming budget, we've actually earmarked for roughly a million dollars in road work. So even if we went to bond for 750, that would be sufficient to match on the town, I mean, on the state funds, which would give us the extra um, 430,000 roughly of state funds to match our 750. So if we went for the whole million, we would actually be able to get potentially that, if that pool widens up by other municipalities not part partaking in the program, um, we could we would be in line to get additional funds as well. So um, it's worth mentioning that this is gonna go up in the town referendum for vote um, as do all of our bonds. This would be through the Rhode Island Infrastructure Bank, which gives very low interest rate loans to municipalities. Um, so we'd get a very favorable interest rate on it. And again, we'd be getting matched uh, by the state um, and we would not see a budget increase. Um, as we discussed, we're looking to level fund our municipal budget. So the only increase is really gonna be what's passed down from Charo. So we're not gonna have to increase our debt service is really what I'm trying to explain. Uh, we're gonna level fund debt service and still be able to get a million dollars plus um, in funding between um, local and state match funds. Ryan, what would be the, <clears throat> just, I'm gonna throw a number out there. Say if we bonded and the voters approved for it and we asked for 750,000, what would be the payoff on that? I mean, how many years would it take to pay off? Oh, well, we could set those terms. Um, we Generally what we've done in the past is we've done 15 year bonds on the roads. So the, the, the finance rule of thumb is that you wanna make the loan match the, the life expectancy of whatever you're bonding, right? So something like land trust, where we were gonna bond, you know, um, woods or trees, you know, we, we can make that a 30 year bond because they're not gonna depreciate over time. Whereas with roads, we know um, they, they have a life expectancy around 15 years, give or take, depending on the surface, obviously, and the wear and tear and weather. So there's a lot of variables, but um, we try to match it to about 15 years, which is the life expense expectancy. We're gonna to try to get this referendum on with the town budget. The referendum, yes, the referendum, yes, correct. We'll be discussing that tomorrow night at the Make FDA. Sure everybody's on the same page. Yep. Yep. So it'll be at the town budget. Um, and we're going to discuss it a little bit further tomorrow night. Um, I'll have some more numbers for you guys. And uh, this this resolution here is really to give the General Assembly, um, the, you know, to, to notify them that the town of Hopkinton is urging them to go through with this funding. Uh, right now, it's in the state budget, but it's not the budget's not approved yet by the General Assembly. So the Rhode Island League of City, Cities and Towns put this resolution together and distributed it to municipalities, asking them to approve it um, and ho hopefully urge the General Assembly to support this funding so that all the towns will get their, their share of the funding. Hey, Brian, the only thing I could say, I, you know, uh, pretty impressed with the the seminar we went to last week, not just on the money side, but on the different ways of paving. I knew there was a couple of ways, but now I'm an expert. I think it's a good thing if the state is- the You need state, like a PhD. Yeah, I got a PhD. It was like another language to me. I was yeah. like, what are they talking about? I know, it was, it was good. It was good there was video to watch along. So I was like, well, how do they, you know, I was like, yeah. one step, I was like, well, how do they do this? Oh, and then the guy was good. He actually went back and explained it, which is, which is really, really good um, that, I think it's a good thing if the state's willing to go ahead and do this. I think it's a good thing for us. Um, and I think it's Ryan's done the legwork on this and I commend him on that. Somebody like to make a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we approve a, uh, this resolution in support of the fiscal year 2024 proposed infrastructure funds. Second. Second. Motion on four, second. All in favor? Burns, aye. Davis, aye. Moffat, aye. Chris, aye. Here, yeah. Thank you, Brian. You want to stay up for the next one? Yeah. Yep. All right. Moving forward, discuss and consider possibly vote to award the bid for professional auditing services to 
Bakey and Company, CPAs, LLC. Yeah, so I'm, I'm stepping in for finance director, Liz Monti. Um, poor, poor Liz is um, in Italy right now. So we, uh, <laughs> she's on vacation. So she asked me to step in and, and uh, get this in front of the council. Um, we went out to bid and th there was only one bid received. So it wasn't a very tough decision. Uh, we were pleased to see though, that that one bid was Bacon and Company, which is the CPA firm that the town has used for the last um, last two, at least that I'm aware of, um, bid cycles. So there's generally three-year contracts. These bids have to be approved on the state level by the Auditor General's office. So we've already sent this bid up to uh, the state office and the General Assembly has approved uh, this contract that was proposed by Bacon and Company, the, the, the bid that was submitted. It's going to be a three-year contract. Uh, FY23 would be 26,500, FY24, 26,750, and FY25 would be 27,000. Um, and Liz Monty goes into detail and in her recommendation for this firm, basically vouching for the work that they do, and I can as well from my time in the finance <laughs> office. They're an incredible firm. They've been very helpful, very thorough. And um, I have the utmost faith in, faith in their ability uh, to conduct the town audits. Excellent. Is there a reason why they, you didn't get other votes, other <coughs> bids? I can tell you that it's a limited pool. Uh, the last time we <coughs> went out to bid, actually the last two times we went out to bid, I was in the finance office. I think we re received three bids <coughs> and one of them was Bacon and Company. Um, one of them was an individual, just one guy um, who was out of New Hampshire. And he was very, you know, it was just one person. So it was very limited <laughs> staff. He was going to come, you know, down from New Hampshire and, and conduct the audit. Mm -hmm. uh, it, there's just not a lot of companies, um, accounting firms that take on municipalities. That That's my understanding, just based on the history and how many companies are out there. I know Bacon and Company, um, they they do the majority of, of the contracts in Rhode Island um, or, or a significant amount of them. So there's not a lot of companies that I'm familiar with. I think there's one other that I'm familiar with. So there's, there's really two main players. There's really uh, two, two main players. Um, Is the other player doing Charlestown? Doing Charlestowns? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure who does their audit. Okay. I think it's Wadovic and company is the other the, firm yeah. and they're pretty small uh they did bid the last time the last two times they're uh they're a pretty smaller outfit than making and company but they're great as, they're a great firm as well they just didn't chose not to bid for whatever okay reason. maybe they weren't aware of it maybe they just had their, their hands full I'm not, i can't speak to why but excellent anybody else for the time manager all i can say on this is uh the uh, desire for some auditing firms to change routinely after every so often, but I did notice they use different personnel uh, when they do the audits. And I know in some cases they've always talked about changing auditing firms sometimes. Uh, yeah, I don't, I, I'm sure that <laughs> there's, there's some, ben, I, I know that there's a lot of benefit to um, having a firm um, that that is familiar with the town and the yeah, inner workings of the good. town, there, there's there's a lot of benefit. Mm -hmm. um, it, they've they've already got you know um, asset schedules in their system. There's a lot of upfront legwork which comes with billable hours. So that's why for a new firm to take on <laughs> this project, it takes them a lot longer to get up to speed and understand the different funds, how the the town's budget, mm -hmm. the GL. Um, staff, you know, so so there's the familiarity is is a good thing, and it definitely reduces billable hours, which is always uh, <coughs> something we're aiming to do. Okay, Excellent. thank you. All right. <clears throat> so I, we make a, a motion. Yes, ma'am. I make a motion to award the bid for professional auditing <laughs> services to Bacon <Baker coughs> Company, CPA LLC. Motion on four. Have a second. Second. Motion on four, second. All in favor? Favor, aye. First, aye. Moffat, aye. Burns, aye. Here, aye. Thank you, Brian.
All right. Next on the new business, discuss and consider the possibility to vote to set a hearing date for a proposed ordinance amendment regarding Vision 4, Economic Development Commission. C. This ordinance, this ordinance plan is being introduced and sponsored by Councilor. I spoke with Saipo. Um, he's, he's on. Is he on? Oh, all right. <coughs> we had a conversation about this. He brought it to his attention for me, <coughs> which I appreciate. Um, as we all know, it's hard to get volunteers to come to these commissions, these boards that we're trying to produce and keep going. Um, I would like to change the number from seven to five on recommendation, which he had looked up. Um, so I blame me, you wanna speak in at any time. And I'd also like to see about making it somebody, and he's got the better words than I do, <laughs> that is from the town or has stake in the town, basically is like I'd like to say. In other words, you're involved in business in the town or you have something at heart to the town, not just a resident, you know? It, it would loosen up the window for our volunteers and they would get her maybe a couple more people to where she could have a meeting Maybe we could move forward a little easier. I mean, I think there's several ordinances out there that could be amended a little bit to make it a little easier on our townspeople that everybody's got lives. Nobody has a lot of time. So I mean, if you can get a few people to step up, it'd be nice. You know, now you have five, you only need three to have a quorum. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Yeah, no, I think we should, I mean, I would definitely set a date to have a hearing. Yeah, I, I definitely think, support it. I definitely think the idea of going to five is a way to facilitate that. Um, seven would be perfect just because it's, there's more people involved, right? right. But that's yes. It's been X amount of years, almost 13, 14 years. <laughs> 2006. Um, so, yeah. you know. I think, it's, I think it's definitely, you know, it's definitely something, something that I think all the town councils the last 10, 15 years have dealt with is trying to get people, so. What do we do? We try to lower the number a little bit, and you know we can take it up from there. Because I mean, you know, look at look at the charter, you know, trying to get people in the charter commission. I mean, yeah. everybody struggles yeah. with that one. You know, so. I mean, uh, the biggest question I'll have, just give it what do you call it, is, is is the significant business interest. You know, I mean, how do we measure that? How are we doing? Because it's just a, to me, it's you know, a company in California has significant, you, you know what I mean? So that's kind of no, a little different. Yeah. Steve, yeah. could you comment on that? Uh, yeah, counselor, I, my, my thinking in using that language was, was that, you know, that would be up to the council to decide what was uh, significant enough. So you'd have uh, people apply to the uh, commission and you you could interview them and and make that decision I did I mean I was thinking of putting in language that said you know you own a business in town but you know I don't know if that's necessarily maybe too restrictive because like someone who's like maybe a realtor might be a good fit for the commission yeah. or uh, or something you can always have uh, you know voting members you know members that participate I mean that's kind of it too you know I think yeah like stakeholders you know I mean I think that you know, I mean, obviously, it's it's an advisory committee anyway. So yeah, well, none of that. I mean, they'd be yeah. submitting an application. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm just throwing the stuff out there, so we're yeah. no, thinking about it before we actually that. have a hearing. You know what I mean? I appreciate you even considering it. Yeah, if, no, for sure. Conflict of interest. Yeah. So whatever dates yeah. we want to set. For I, I think committees should have a diversity of backgrounds on them. The thing that concerns me is the fact that. To what extent should boards and commissions in the town of Hopkins have non-residents on it? Uh, usually boards and commissions, as well as a council, are generalists, and you have staff that guides people. Uh, but I, what I'm going to try to do is find out how many of these light commissions have non-residents on them. Certainly, uh, I think that's very important because you could arguably make the case 
on any other board for conservation, <laughs> you could have somebody who uh, is into in works for the DEM. They live in another town. They might want to be on a conservation. I'm just using that as an example, but uh, so I'm just putting that out. I I'm a little concerned about having non-residents on boards and commissions. Uh, I'm not going to rule out not supporting this, but I'm a little, uh, I'm very big on residency. Some boards supposedly are like, it, are just not, ex, they don't have expertise per se. They represent the feelings of the town. And if the council is doing its job, you have a diversity of opinions, you have business people, but seeing all the debates through the years, whether it's the big box stores or the dog track and all these other things that I've seen in my lifetime, nearly 70 years in the town. A lot of people have different ideas of what business they want to bring into town. So one person's view might not be the rank and file in the town because everybody has different opinions on it. So I want to keep an open mind on that, but I do have a concern generally, not only on this commission, but to have non-residents on boards and commissions. I'm not talking about town employees. I'm talking about boards and commissions. And with that, I'm going to try to have an open mind, see what the debate is and the arguments are. But I do think I do thank uh, Councillor Burns for his efforts on business. We do have to address that because there's supposedly a stigma concerning the town of Hopkins that we're anti-business. But a lot of the stuff that I historically oppose, like a dog racing track, six flags, uh, big box so it normally would be controversial in their own way, and that's not necessarily anti-business. Uh, I could, I could and, go and, with and, even and it's always oh. easier said than done, right? I mean, yeah. It's, yeah, always. I mean, that's you know. But you know, some projects are just of their nature is controversial. Sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could even go with business owners. We got several businesses in this town that none of their owners live here. Right. right. Not sure. But. They have yeah. stake in the game. Could be we could put it to Town Hoffman. Well, I mean, we're gonna have a hearing Washington yeah. County or something like that. Washington County area, something like that. Will we have enough time in the second week in June or not? Is that really full? I don't think we're, we're gonna need much time on this. June twentieth. You want to try for June twentieth? I meant the third week in the you're not going to be here any of that. Because well, hmm. you can't zoom week. anymore and vote. You know that. I know that. Okay, so I didn't know but, that. I but June, June 22nd is my birthday, and I'm <coughs> going to the spa, so I can come to it. All right. So, <laughs> what was the dates again? I'm sorry, Maria. June 20th. That's a Tuesday. A Tuesday? Oh, it has to be on a. Still be lighting it up. Okay. June twentieth. Everybody good with that? Set a hearing date, June twentieth for this. Yes, so that's a third Monday. It's the third Tuesday. With Mr. President, before you move on, could I, I could I respond to uh, Councillor Hurst? Yes, sure. Go ahead, Steve. I, I just wanted. I heard him mention he might look for other towns where they have non-residents uh, on this uh, commission, and uh, I just that that idea of of that suggestion came to me because I uh, I was on the Economic Development Board in uh, Warren back, it must have been five, six years ago or more now. And when I was serving on that board in Warren, we did have, I know, at least one member that owned a, a building and was a landlord and a business owner in town, but he lived in Foster. And uh, so that was why that idea came to me as far as I, I know that you're struggling to find people to volunteer for these things. And that was an idea that came to me as a way to, uh, you know, open it up and fill up the membership and, and get the when, board up. When are we meeting on the third Tuesday? Juneteenth is the ninth. It's a holiday. It's a holiday. It's a holiday. Okay. I just had to look it up. Well, you're out. I'm wondering the same That's thing. I, I'm like, I was thinking, I was like, what holiday? why are we on a Tuesday? Yeah, Tuesday's good. All right, so everybody's good with it? June 20th. Yes. So, um, so June 20th? Mm -hmm. All right, so I'll, I'll make a motion that we um, have a hearing on June 20th um, for the proposed ordinance amendment regarding Division 4 Economic Development Commission, Section 2-88, Membership and Organization. Second. 
Motion on for a second. All in favor? Davis, aye. First, aye. Burns, aye. Moffat, aye. Here, aye. Thank you very much, there, Councilor. Excellent. Well done. We're going to come up with a good idea. I like that. All right. Unfinished buzz. Un, yeah, unfinished business. Discuss and consider. Discuss and possibly vote on a motion or to either approve or reject the amendment to the code of ordinance chapter 135. Mm -hmm. Yes. 135 district use regulations use category 43 water supply introduced and sponsored by council Davis. Um, I'll make a motion that we uh, vote to, uh, to approve the amendment to the code of ordinances chapter 135 district use regulations. 134. Oh, chapter 134? Mm -hmm. It says chapter 135. Well, on the actual, is that is where we have, it says 134. On the actual piece of paper, it shows the, or, the amendment. Is that right? Is that a, a mistake? Let me get this one. Yeah, I, that being... I think it should be 134. Yeah. Yes. Oh, 134. Right, okay. So I will. Um... Amend that motion to say chapter 134. Second. Motion on the floor, second. All in favor? Davis, aye. Burns, aye. Fresh, aye. Moffat, aye. Geary, aye. Motion passes. Thank you, Council Davis. Thank you, all councilors. Next up, public comment. Uh, let's see if it's Brian, anybody online? No. Uh, Mr. President, uh, hold on. Any parting shots before we get to you? Don't forget about tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. The financial <laughs> financial Tuesday. town assembly phase of the financial town assembly reference referendum process. I should have a letter in the Wesley Sun tomorrow referencing that and some other stuff. Okay. <laughs> All right, go. <laughs> uh, I did attend the uh, calling hours for uh, former Hopkins police officer Robert W. Kenyon Jr., who recently died. Uh, and uh, I, the town clerk uh, made copies. I brought in a couple of the funeral home cards. So, with that said, in, I moved that the Hopkins Town Council meeting adjourn in memory of the late Robert W. Kenyon Jr. I do have one thing to add to that. Thank you, Scott. Uh, myself and the town manager did attend the break. Uh, and I will tell you, it was a very good turnout from everybody within the town. Uh, thoughts go out to the family, friends, everybody involved. Now, second that motion. Okay. Motion on four, second. All in favor? Chris, aye. Chris, aye. Davis, aye. 